Lovers of both science and nature can check out a very special exhibit at the Ward Museum Salisbury University this winter. One that'll have you remembering those scientific illustrations in your high school textbooks in a whole new way. The exhibit is called Scientific Illustration, Artistry in the Age of Science, and we can say from experience that it's an eye-opener. It runs through May 14th, and it's also a bit of a history lesson. The early illustrations begin in the 1700s and proceed through the 19th and 20th centuries right up until the present day. As with any art form, the imagery becomes more sophisticated with the passage of time. One of the things that you can really see in these is going from sort of a, a static representation that doesn't necessarily show the way an animal moves or the way it acts in life. Whereas when you move up into the Audubons, that was one of the things that he was really known for is capturing the sense of movement, the way that the animal actually acts in nature. Jackson Medell is one of the driving forces behind this exhibit, and we wanted to know how the art of illustration is different from photography. One of the things that, that illustration can do that photography can't is represent concepts or things that are invisible to the naked eye. Um, so molecular illustrations, that's something we can't really take a picture of. Um, but uh, an artist can represent that in a very unique and accurate way. Jackson shows us an example of how scientific illustration can convey a complex concept in one single image. In this case, the entire life cycle of a newly discovered beetle. So you have the, the plant that it lives with, that it lives on, that it lives in. Um, and you have the different stages of its life cycle from larva um, to adult and its feeding process. So it, does, it really showcases a lot of what scientific illustration does. Guest artist Tyna Litwack created the piece. I'm a scientific illustrator. I work for the Department of Agriculture, but I work at the Museum of Natural History. And I've been an illustrator um, mostly in entomology, but a lot of other subspecialties also, for about 35 years. So I've been at it my whole career. It's a technical field. It's not just making a picture. They're depicting something that is what you're seeing and trying to communicate, record that and communicate that, or you're communicating scientific concepts, things that you have nobody's ever seen. You know, like dinosaurs, you I mean illustrators illustrate all kinds of things that have never been actually seen by humans. Tyna gives us some insight into the creative process behind these unique works of art. And I work with dead insects on a pin or on a microscope slide. Sometimes they're very, very small. If the information on the insect is so small, I'll get it, one of the scientists, I'll take a scanning electron microscope photo and get the details from that. But uh, ordinarily, I start with a dead insect on a pin and microscopes and, and draw. When I first started in illustration, I was doing a lot of pen and ink, and now everything is digital. I'm 100%. I work in Adobe Photoshop. Essentially, you're working with a paintbrush and layers, just like you would in traditional painting. I, but it's just digital, you don't have to, you don't get your hands dirty. <laughs> Even though these pieces are used primarily in technical fields and not often accessible to the public, they are in their purest form artworks, so there's much to admire. But the way the neck curves, um, the way um, the eye is sort of positioned away from um, the center of the photograph or the painting, it's not really looking at the viewer. Um, I think it, it really captures that sense of movement. These are two new species of fly. I find the, 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 what goes on in structurally in an insect really interesting and it's just beautiful and I've, I've always liked drawing that. I, I was interested in it when I was a kid. I'm still doing the same job 35 years later and I still like it. So. <laughs> This exhibit is open to the public through May 14th and is free to museum members, Salisbury University folks, and veterans. Others can pay a modest fee, which is nothing compared to the enjoyment we know you'll get from it. So catch it while you can. These amazing works are truly in a class by themselves. <music>